So we hope you'll check out some of those features and let us know what's on your mind. So today we're gonna just start with the first question, which is what age should I start bringing my child to the dentist? And I said this before, but I really think that this number is kind of shocking for a lot of parents. Um, and part of that is just on an educational standpoint, meaning that your pediatrician or the, you know, the doctor, even the, your OBGYN who's talking to you about when you're about to have a child, they're not, we're not worried about teeth at that point. So we're not talking about it. So we're trying to do our due diligence to let you know, you should be bringing your child to their first dental checkup with whatever dentist you choose by age one. So by their first birthday or right around their first birthday, they should be seeing the dentist for the first time. We do this because we want them to start getting acclimated to coming to the dental appointment. I went over this a little bit a couple weeks ago on a live, so you can check out some more information there. But a lot of times that visit is very simple process. It literally consists of an exam and possibly we'll put some fluoride on their teeth, but we try to keep it pretty simple. It's just an introductory appointment to our practice, but it also gives you some insight on what you may be looking for as they start to grow. So if you, but also we want to reiterate that it's never too late to bring them. So let's say your kid is four or five years old and you haven't brought them to the dentist yet. That's still okay. Again, it's never too late to get started and we're here for you to get that accomplished. Now, the next one is always at home. How often should I replace our family's toothbrushes? So this is gonna be every three months with pretty much all the time. But technically, if you have a member in the household who's been ill with something that could be contagious, such as COVID or a cold or the flu, then you need to go ahead and switch out your toothbrushes ASAP and start a new set. And again, anytime anyone comes into the house with a contagious illness or virus, we want you to be throwing those toothbrushes away and getting new ones. Now, this also applies to the electric toothbrush. So electric toothbrushes, some of them have replaceable heads and some of them don't. So if it has a replaceable head, you're going to replace that every three months or when a family member is ill. If it doesn't have a replaceable head, then unfortunately that entire toothbrush has to go in the garbage because the head can't be replaced. So you have to do that every three months or if you, you or your child have an illness. Now, just to reiterate a little bit more on the electric toothbrush versions, if you are interested, we do have electric toothbrushes available for sale within our practice. We have them for kids and adults. Um, they range from $25 for um, kids, and it comes with like toothpaste and flossers and things like that. And they do have the replaceable heads, so you can always buy replaceable heads for those. Um, and then we ha have them all the way up to um, really fancy toothbrushes that if you bought it at Walmart, it would be like $230. But when you buy it here in our practice, it's about $150. So you are saving a lot of money. And again, you know, those range from kids all the way to adults. We also sell the replacement heads for oral pressed oral B brushes. So if you need any of that information, you can always reach out to us directly for that. All right. So number three, why should I fix their teeth at this age? They are only baby teeth. We get this question a lot. And, you know, unfortunately, obviously in pediatrics, we feel very strongly that you try to take care of their baby teeth. There are a number of reasons why cavities on baby teeth need to be treated. Healthy baby teeth and primary teeth are vital to the health of the adult or permanent teeth. Untreated cavities on baby teeth can cause pain and infection, as well as can affect the health of the underlying permanent tooth. Children need their baby teeth to help guide in their permanent teeth correctly. So what this means is if our body works in the most mysterious ways, and so the science behind this, I'm not exactly positive on, but basically when your teeth, when your kid's teeth are starting to form their permanent teeth, the buds start coming in at certain ages. And if it doesn't have the baby tooth there to kind of guide it where to go, then it, you know, it could be that maybe that permanent tooth is going to take a, a longer amount of time for it to come in. So when children have cavities that then lead to infection, that then lead to having to be extracted due to abscess that can cause a delay in the permanent tooth eruption. Um, it can be a little scientific, but the baby tooth acts as a guide for the adult teeth. When children lose teeth early to infection or injury, this can cause space loss as well as cause overcrowding. So we just wanna make sure that we're always taking care of those cavities as soon as possible. And that's what we're here for. 
we're, we aim to make sure that you're educated on why the cavity appeared, you know, within reason. And then also to let you know all the um, ways that we can possibly get that treated and get your child taken care of so that they are not in pain, okay? Then the next question is, when should I, when should I bring my child to be seen for an orthodontic consultation? Now, this one is going to get just a tad bit lengthy, but not, I'm going to try to shorten, make it short and sweet. But the American Association of Orthodontics recommends your child be seen by age seven, okay? So by then your child has enough permanent teeth for an orthodontist to evaluate the developing teeth and the jaws, while in turn can provide a wealth of information. AAO orthodontists are trained to spot subtle problems even in young children. And these kinds of problems, there's a short list here I'm gonna go over, but Dr. Jason is our orthodontist here at PDA and O. He is amazing. He will work with you and your family. He will make sure that we're you know, providing the most excellent orthodontic care possible. Um, but we do have kids that do start orthodontic treatment around age seven. And you, I mean, you can start that all the way up into your teenage years, but, or even to adults, which we do offer ortho for adults. But, you know, we just want you to know that the earlier prevention, the better. So some of those things could be underbites, crossbites, very, very crowded teeth. So once they start to get their permanent teeth coming in, you can kind of tell um, even on some x-rays what that overcrowding situation may look like. Excessively spaced teeth. So let's say they have a whole lot of space between their teeth. We want to try to start pulling those together. And then there is such a thing as having extra teeth or missing teeth. So sometimes kids are born and they end up getting an extra tooth that they don't need, or they actually don't end up getting in certain permanent teeth over the course of their eruption stages, okay? And then teeth that meet abnormally or don't meet at all. And then we also can address thumb, finger, or pacifier habits that this can really affect the way that their teeth are coming in and their jaw growth, the way their jaw is forming as that part is developing. So we really wanna make sure that if you feel like your child is suffering from any of these items, um, to talk with your dentist, find out if they're eligible to go ahead and get an orthodontic consult. Um, we, we're more than happy to talk to you. And that's one of the benefits of coming to pda and is that you have the dentist and the orthodontist in the same practice and so don't be, don't be hesitant to ask the dentist. If you feel like your child could really benefit from some early orthodontic treatment, please just let your dentist know. And obviously if they see something that's more on the severe side, they will refer them at that time as well. All right, so number five, how can I prepare my anxious child for dental visits? This again can get kind of loaded because every child is completely different. Every family is different. Every child, you know, will react differently to different things. We know that there can be different types of anxiety among humans and especially children. So we want to make sure that you know that you are the parent and you will know best what your child will need. OK, so we recommend that you keep exclamation sometimes to a minimum because sometimes too much information is enough to make them more nervous. Over the last 15 years of working in this clinic, I've talked to several parents and told them, you know, sometimes it's not even worth it to tell your child you're going to the dentist. If they're anxious for other types of appointments, or let's say they've come in for a visit and it just wasn't great, and then they have to come back in six months for their cleaning and they're just, you know, they're going to kind of be dreading it, you might not even try to like bring up that subject. Like you might just want to tell them like you're going to the store and then that way their anxiety may start when they get in the parking lot, but at least it's not days and days of ramped up anxiety that can cause that appointment to go awry. Again, you are the parent, you know what's best for your child. Some children need an over explanation. Some children need to know exactly what's going on and when they know exactly what's going on, then they tend to do better. Again, we're not telling you to have secrets from your children or anything like that. Just do what is best for your child. But one of the other things we really wanna stress is that if you had a bad experience at the dentist as a child, do not share that in front of your children. So if you're at a friend's house or even talking to your children about their upcoming dental visits, you don't wanna say things like, when I went to the dentist, it was awful, or you, know, you don't wanna talk about certain things. So just make sure that you're keeping those conversations with adults only and not allowing your child to become fearful just based on something that you went through when you were younger, because obviously here at PDA and O, we're trying to make sure that the environment is there to make the experience wonderful for your children. 
All right. So moving on from that one, we're going to go into another fun one. And um, this is, do you take my insurance? The answer to that is always, yes, we will take your insurance. We will look everything up for you. We have insurance coordinators on staff that will call and check your benefits. Um, the biggest thing that we always run into is, you know, it's possible that your insurance may not cover what you're having done. That doesn't mean that we're not going to accept the insurance or try to file it for you or do anything, but we want you to understand that we're here for you. We're here to answer these questions. This is why we have dedicated staff members that work only in our insurance department. Um, there are two basic categories for insurance from, from a consumer standpoint, and that is whether you are considered in network or out of network. For us, we will take anyone. We will file whatever, but if you are considered an in network means that we have a contract with that insurance company. And they may or may not allow a small discount or require us to take a discount off of our regularly priced fees, okay? And so we're given a fee schedule by that insurance company and we must always abide by that fee schedule. So for example, Delta Dental is somebody that we're in network with. So they say, if you charge X for this type of procedure, let's say a crown, then our patients who have this insurance plan should only have to pay Y. Okay, and then we would write off the difference. Now, if it's out of network, then usually there is not a write off. So you're going to pay your percentage based on what your insurance says on the full price of that crown. Okay, now one is not necessarily better than the other technically, um, especially like with orthodontics, for example. And out of, you can come to an out of network orthodontist and still get your full maximum orthodontic coverage. Um, a lot of insurance plans, even though we're not in network because we're on the pediatric side, some of them will actually pay us, you know, at 100% of the claim. So it just really varies insurance to insurance. Again, something that we really want to make sure that we're educating parents on is that you could have Delta Dental of Arkansas through your employer and your neighbor could have Delta Dental of Arkansas through their employer, but your plans are completely different and your plans are selected by your employer. So if something isn't covered, it's because your employer decided not to bring on that coverage. It's not because your insurance company is refusing to pay for it. So some things are not covered. Um, for example, we have an insurance company um, we take a lot of kids um, to have their um, teeth fixed in the hospital or under an anesthesia setting. Well, we have an insurance provider that will not pay for any dental procedures done outside of a dental office. Now, that will fall under your medical and will be subject to your medical deductible and things like that, but they're not going to cover it under your dental plan. And that, that's just an example. It's, that isn't on every single plan, but that's just an example to let you know that that specific employer has chosen that plan and has chosen that coverage. It's not that your insurance company isn't covering it. It's that your employer chose not to have that option. All right. And that can get, insurance can get really, really, really confusing for anyone. So if you have any questions about that, do not hesitate to reach out and ask us, okay? Now, number seven, are you accepting new patients and what ages do you accept? We are always accepting new patients. When we started this practice 20 years ago with our founding partner, Dr. Tanya, she just said she would always be taking new patients and we have never stopped. So we will always, always and forever, as far as we understand, always be taking on new patients. We normally take on new patients between the, about the ages of obviously one um, and up to ages 14 or 15. What we can usually do on a new older patient that's in their teen years is we'll bring them in for the first initial appointment. We'll do their first cleaning, their first set of x-rays, things like that that are needed. And then if we feel they could be better served in a general practice, then we'll get them referred over for any kind of things that they may need for that. And they would start going to a general from there. But just know that we will do everything we can within our practice, as long as your child is a great fit for our practice. Now, when they start to get older, they may start getting referred out, but that's not because technically of their age, it's just more of the expertise in the general dentistry side that we feel like they would be better served by an actual general practice. So just that's just some information up front. So again, we are taking new patients and we usually take those between the ages of zero to 14 or 15 years old. All right, so number eight, 
what do I do if my child has an emergency after hours? Well, you absolutely call us. We have an after hours line. I have learned that some dentists in our area do not offer that. So we are very proud to be able to offer that. Um, you just call our main office number and follow the prompts. It will put you through to the emergency line where you'll leave a voicemail. That voicemail will then be emailed and texted to our assistant on call. They will text you back, get some information, possibly ask for some photos of the injury, maybe a video and just kind of a pain scale. They'll ask a series of questions <clears throat> via text or call, and then they'll triage that with The number one thing I want you to know, we have a video all about what is a true emergency, but what we want you to understand from our perspective on how we feel about emergencies and things like that is you can call us about anything that's causing your child pain or discomfort over the weekend. But as parents, we want you to be armed with the knowledge to know that the only real, real, completely true dental emergency, like get to the dental office right now, is if they ha have somehow knocked out a permanent tooth. So this is going to be an older patient that's already getting their permanent teeth in and they've had some type of fall. They've been hitting the mouth with a ball or they've, you know, something has happened. I've had them hit them on the side of the pool and they've knocked out a permanent tooth. Um, there's a series of things you can watch in that video about what you're supposed to do about that. But we just want you to know that that's the real like get into the dental office soon dental emergency. What you may see on the triage line is more of, OK, we think that maybe they have an infection. Let's see some photos. Let's get you an antibiotic and let's bring you in to check that when we're open for regular business hours. Um, we get a lot of calls for chip teeth. And chipped teeth is something that can really be a concern for parents. And we completely understand their tooth is, you know, part of the way gone. And, you, you know, it's just, it can be really devastating. It can also be hard on the kids. Um, normally, if they've fallen and they chipped a tooth, they've had to hit pretty hard because um, teeth are stronger pretty much than the bones in your body. So they've taken a really hard fall. And that chip can really, you know, just really take it out of parents for, for that. And we completely understand that. We just want you to know that that is usually something that we'll tell you to come back in and we'll get you in usually on the next business day or the day after that to try to fix that. Because a lot of times we can't do a lot of the treatment that's necessary for those types of things if they've just had an injury because of the gums, um, the tissue and things like that. They'll swell. We can't numb them. There's different things that fall into that. But we just want you to know that we understand um, that that can be scary as a parent. But so we're willing to walk you through that and triage that. We just want you to understand that, you know, it's not something we have to rush to the dental office for. And there's several other things listed in that other video. If you want to check that out on our YouTube channel, you can definitely do that. All right. So why do my children, why do my child's permanent teeth appear to be darker than their baby teeth? Is this normal? And the answer to that is yes, it's completely normal. Um, it is a little bit scientific, and I always feel like dental gets super scientific, so I try to do it in the most layman terms as possible, but basically the enamel on these teeth just forms differently it's on their permanent teeth. So the reason there is such a contrast is because you can see both sets at the same time. So a lot of times what we get calls about are their permanent teeth are coming in behind their baby teeth. Again, back to the last question, that's not technically an emergency. We just encourage you to wiggle the baby teeth and try to get them out because it's time. And then we can usually see them at their next appointment. And if they're still not out, we'll see what we can do. Um, but a lot of times because you're seeing them one set behind the other, this one can look darker or whiter compared to this tooth just because they're up next to each other. And you'll notice that once all their permanent teeth are in, they're all pretty much the same shade. They can just have a huge contrast by the way that they come in. All right, and lastly, since I feel like this is one of the most important questions, is how do I make an appointment? And um, we have several ways that you can actually make an appointment. The first one is obviously to call us. Our office number is 479-582-0600. We also have an appointment request form on our website. We also, you can use the Clara messaging on our website as well. You can also email us directly at info at smilesorwild.com. So there are several ways you can make that appointment. We have um, telephone receptionists on standby all the time to answer the phones. We're returning our Clara messages. Um, we're, we do all kinds of things to try to communicate with you to make sure that we're making it as easy as possible. 
Um, we have a lot of communication tools because we wanna make sure that we're meeting you where you're at. So some parents may really, really like text messaging. Some parents may really like email and some parents may really like phone calls. So we wanna make sure that we're offering all of those things and then we'll work it on the back end so that we're getting the appointment scheduled for you as quickly as possible. So that is all that I have for today as far as our top 10 questions. I really wanna thank you all for watching us today and um, for taking time out of your day um, and joining us. We are really trying to make sure that we are educating and empowering you as parents, as well as encouraging you to step in and be the oral healthcare expert at your home. Um, if you are you know, taking care of your kids' teeth, then you're doing a lot. I literally, I joke all the time um, that my kids are the probably the worst brushers, but when mama goes in there, it's a big deal. So if you are active and playing an active role in their oral, oral health care, they're more likely um, to be able to take care of their teeth. Um, I did find a really funny sign at a shop this weekend that says you don't have to brush your teeth, just the ones you want to keep. And that usually tends to get my kids um, to understand. So um, we set literally my kids are 10 and 13 and we set an Alexa timer every night that's at right before they go to bed that's like you need to brush your teeth and start getting ready for bed and it totally works they are on it they take care of it they're brushing they're brushing for their full two minutes they and it's just become really a part of their routine but it did take some years to really get that started so the more diligent you are the more they can see you as an example of doing that the more you're encouraging good brushing um, then the better off their oral health care will be overall um, as a practice, we are here for you. So please do not forget that you can follow us on social media. You can find us here on Facebook and Instagram and on Spotify and iTunes for our podcast by searching just Smiles or Wild. Our website is smilesorwild.com. You can also find us on YouTube by searching our office name, Pediatric Dental Associates and Orthodontics. And I am always available by phone or email. My, our phone number here is 479-582-0600. And my email, my direct email is amy at smilesorwild.com. Thank you all again for watching and we'll see you again soon. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and go visit us on smilesorwild.com.